Hello and welcome to the second part in this series of Motorcycle Dynamics, where I'll show you how you can use simple trigonometry to start building your own dynamic geometry calculator. In this part, we'll build the calculator for the hardtail frame, and in part three, we'll start adding in the rear suspension. Now, I'm planning to share the Excel at certain stages when we reach new calculations, and then I'll take that Excel and see if we can't make a program that you guys can use at home or on track. So with all that said, let's get into it. So starting with the hardtail frame, our goal is to calculate the dynamic wheelbase, dynamic rake angle, and dynamic trail values. If you're not sure what these are, I recommend going back to part one of this series. So in order to calculate this, we need to focus on some key points, and those are the rear wheel center, the headstock upper, the headstock lower, the fork top, and the front wheel center. And we'll do this by triangulating the chassis. So here we can see we have a main frame triangle and a front end triangle. Now we get this separate front end triangle because of the offset built into the top yoke. And because of the difference in wheel radiuses, we have a ground plane triangle. So really we just need to calculate these three triangles. Start with the ground plane. We know the side A, this is the difference in wheel radius. For angle C, we know this is a 90 degree angle, and that's all that we know. Now for the main frame triangle, we only know the length B, and this is the length between the rear wheel center and the headstock. Even if we know the head angle of the headstock on the frame, this would not be our angle C. We also need to consider the opposite angle of the front end triangle. So that brings us to the front end triangle, which is the first one that we need to solve. We know A, which is the offset. We know B, which is the fork length, which is going to be our variable. And then we know the angle C, which is 90 degrees. That gives us a right angle triangle. Since this could be the first time we've had to use trigonometry since school, let's refresh our memories. For a right angle triangle, there are two rules that we should remember, Pythagoras and Sokotoa. So with Pythagoras, if we have two of the sides, we can easily calculate the third. And if you only have one angle and a side, then we'll have to rely on Sokotoa. And an example of how that would work, if we know our hypotenuse, which is the longest side, labeled C, and we want to know either our opposite or our adjacent, we would have to use either sine for opposite or cos for adjacent. And if you want to solve an angle, you'll need two sides, and then you'll have to use the inverse sine cos tan equations. Anyway, I've transposed it here for simplicity, but we'll only need a couple of these. So on this channel, I would like to encourage self-learning. Uh, by all means, follow along, follow these equations which I'm about to show. But if you do fancy the challenge, uh, get your brain ticking over before we get into more complicated calculations. Uh, do give this a go yourself. So for side C, we can simply use Pythagoras because we know the offset and we know the length of our fork. And then we can use the inverse tan to calculate our angle. So for non-right angle triangles, it becomes a little bit more complicated. Here we have the sine rule and the law of cosines. Now for the main frame, we have our length A now from calculating the front end. And the same goes for angle C. As for the rest of the triangle, we can use the sine rule and cosine rule for angle A and length C. Now the next thing we have to calculate is the ground plane triangle. And this will be the exact same process as it was for the front end. In this case, we'll be applying Pythagoras for length B and then inverse sine for angle A. So we've now calculated the wheelbase and we can calculate our rake angle when we consider all of the angles involved. But there is one more triangle that we need and that is the one to calculate our trail value. Now, if there was no offset, this would be a very simple right angle triangle with our wheel radius on the left hand side, the trail on the bottom and our rake angle. But because of the offset, we have to factor in some adjustment. So if you are going to give building your own calculator a go, uh, here is a simple cheat sheet. So at this point, we've calculated our triangles, but you haven't built the relationship between them. So Let's start looking at this again. Now earlier I highlighted that these points were important and they're important because we need to plot the positions of these on a graph. 
and we'll get those positions using what we've calculated through these triangles. Now the x y position for the rear wheel center is just the rear wheel radius. Now if we want to consider the relationship of the headstock to the rear wheel we actually just have a right angle triangle for our x axis and our y axis. So we can actually simply calculate all of these positions with two simple equations. We just have to be careful to use the right angle and that's where our calculations come in. So I won't go through them all but I will go through an example here. So we know that the main frame angle here is 26.6 degrees and the angle to the ground plane is 0.6. So to make the right angle triangle, we need to subtract the 0.6 degrees from 26.6. Then with the length between the rear wheel and the headstock and the angle, we use either cos or sine to calculate the x or the y position. Once we've plotted all of these points on the graph, we'll have something that looks a little something like this. And if done properly, we should have a simple dynamic geometry calculator with some simple visualization. Okay, so this is our breakdown. We have one for the main frame, two for the ground plane, three for the front end and four for trail. The front end suspension is our variable. Now those important points again are the wheelbase, the rake angle, and the trail. So as we change the front suspension, we'll see all of the calculations recalculate and we'll see our new trail and rake values. Now here we can see how much of an effect the front wheel radius will have on our rake and trail values. Now this increase in the wheel radius results in an extra 1 degree of rake angle which then transfers an extra 20 millimeters to the trail value and that is an extra 20% to the original value. So we could also consider that in reverse. Let's say your tires are not inflated to the correct PSI and then you have a little bit of squish. You could be losing 10 millimeters or so on that front wheel radius and that could be giving you a reduction in 10 millimeters of trail, 10% trail lost. And on top of that, our tires are acting as springs. So if they're not inflated to the correct PSI, they're not gonna have the correct characteristics, the radial stiffness and the longitudinal stiffness. It means that we're not gonna be getting the dampening performance that you would expect from your tires. And that's gonna really eat into the handling performance. And of course, we can't forget the front suspension settings not just the spring stiffness but also the preload and the damping and these are really going to affect the bike's behavior in regards to dive and squat these being the bike's eagerness to uh, fully compress that front suspension or to sit back on the rear so we can start to see how having our bike set up professionally can have a huge effect and improvement on how they handle Okay, so this is the data analysis page. Just to walk through what we have here, we have a column for GPS, which may be if you have data for around a track, the time, and the travel. The travel would be measured from, say, potentiometer that you have installed on the front suspension. Then in column O, we have the total fork length, and this is being adjusted by the value that we put into the travel on the left. And then in each row, we have all of the triangles we've calculated so that we could dynamically calculate the rake and trail values. Now these rake and trail values apply to uh, the single plane. Once the bike starts to lean, we then change from rake and trail to effective rake and trail values. So we'll need to go through some extra steps to calculate those and start including the extra degree of freedom. So that's it for part two. If you want more information, if you want some more explanations or uh, if you want me to show more of the formulas that I'm using in Excel, please let me know and I'll try and add those into part three. Part three will be more comprehensive, including uh, the rear suspension, probably including the linkage as well. Also, let me know if you're interested in the files as well. I'll be planning to put those up after part three 
when it's in a more finished state. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time.